In this character animation tutorial, we learn how to animate a character walk from the side view. Here's what we are aiming at. Observe that the character's walk is animated in the same place. Also, observe that the height and width of the character is also carefully kept intact. Note the way the character's entire body is involved in the walk. This is the quality of output that you can accomplish with a character in Flash. Let's begin by opening the file Character Dissection Side Angle. Remember how we dissected and rigged the front view of the character. You'll notice that this character is also fully dissected and rigged. Alright, now let's ensure we do not cross the character's height. For this, we'll use guides. This is a facility that provides strong reference points for your character's placement and movement in the tutorial. Let's see how to get these guidelines. To get guides, you need the rulers. If you do not have the ruler turned on, then simply right-click on the screen and click on Ruler. After that, click on the horizontal ruler and drag a line into the screen. Place the first one right at the bottom of the shoes. This will give you the exact ground level on which the character will walk. The rule is, the character's shoes should never violate this ground level. Now drag another line out of the vertical ruler and place it in the line with the character's spine. Remember the center axis of our character's body should be calculated according to the body below the head. In our character design, the face is protruding even beyond the character's belly. This makes the character look cute and cartoony, but we cannot use its center as an axis for our walk cycle. Next, again drag a guide from the horizontal ruler and place it at the tip of the character's hair. As this is a basic tutorial on character walk, we'll stick to the fundamental principle that while the character walks on even ground, its height will remain constant. While working on the character, these guides must not be tempered with. So, just like we lock layers, let's lock these guides. Simply right click on the work area, select the guides tab and click on lock guides. Ok, all set. Now we are ready to save this file as a copy. As you have learnt already, never ever work on the original file. Always make a copy. To do so, you can go to the file menu and click save as. Name the new file as character walk side angle and press save. Before you go to work on the character, convert the dissected character into a symbol. Click and select the character. Now press F8 to call the convert to symbol dialog box and name it as main character. Keep the graphic radio button switched on and the registration point in the center. In the layer stack, rename the layer as main character. Now that the character is a symbol, it's time to define the duration of the character's walk cycle. Let's give the character 25 frames to complete one walk cycle. Click on the 25th frame on the timeline and press F5 to insert a frame. It's not important to give every symbol inside the character the duration of 25 frames. Otherwise, the animation will not play. Remember the rule. What applies to one part of the character applies to all parts of that character. So, double click the main character symbol, click on the 25th frame on the timeline and press F5 to add a frame. Likewise, enter the boy symbol. Now drag the timeline to see all the layers. You'll see all the dissected of the character inside. Drag and select the 25th frame on all the layers and press F5. You'll remember that every individual part of the body is dissected into smaller parts. So, double click and enter them one by one and click F5 on the 25th frame of each symbol's layer. Now observe carefully. The left hand of the character is not visible from the side view. So, hide the other layers above it by clicking and dragging over the black dots the eye icon in the layer stack. We'll come to the legs later. 
The next step is setting the pivot points or rotation points of the upper body parts. Select the right hand and move the empty circle at the middle of the character to the shoulder. Hide all other layers to view the left hand of the character and move its pivot point to the shoulder as well. Now turn to the legs. Double click to enter the right leg symbol and assign 25 frames to its three parts by pressing F5 on the 25th frame. Enter the right feet or shoes and repeat it. Now, again execute the same process for the left leg. Remember, you'll have to hide the right leg to work on the left leg. After you are done, recheck all the different parts carefully. In character design, the dissected character has several parts and in side views, some parts of the character are not directly visible and it is possible to miss a part. So, as a matter of practice, make sure you double check and triple check every single part before you go ahead. There's another crucial point here. When you assign more than one frame to the character's parts, there is another level of checking. Drag the timeline seeker forward and backward and keep a sharp eye on the character. Check if any part has moved by accident. While adding frames to the various objects, you could have accidentally clicked and moved a part. This checking system helps you detect the errors in position and makes it easy to fix them. Alright, we can move to the actual animation now. But before that, Try to remember what happens when a person walks. You would have observed that our entire body moves to and fro when we walk. The upper body bends forward slightly as we take our next step. We are now going to work on this bending. Pay close attention. We are inside the boy symbol. Unlock all the layers in the layer stack. Before taking the first step, the character will be standing straight. As it lifts its foot, to take the first step, its upper body, that is, the head, the neck, the hands, the t-shirt part and the tummy should bend forward. Remember that there will be change in the character's position here. But it is also important that we store the original straight position of the character. So, to avoid any problems later, we'll create a keyframe for all the body parts on the seventh frame. On the timeline, Drag and select the 7th frame on all layers. Press F6 to add a keyframe on all the layers. Now, come to the first frame to create the first pose of the character. We are aiming for the pose in which the character's left leg is bent at the back. The right leg is lifted forward, the left leg is behind and the character is bending just a bit forward. Select the upper body by dragging your selection tool over it. Access the free transform tool by pressing Q on your keyboard. You want the character to bend from the west. That means it must rotate from the west. So, hold the pivot point, that is the empty circle, in the middle of the selection. Now, drag and drop it on the midpoint of the west. Rotate the selected upper body forward. Remember, the character will walk at a normal pace. So, the bend should be slight. If the walking speed is more, then the bend will be steeper and faster. Let's animate the character's first step. Select the right leg of the character and rotate it around the knee so the foot extends forward. Rotate the leg just a bit further so the foot stays above the ground level. Zoom inside the screen to observe that the heel of the right shoe are below the ground level. Next, the left leg must go symmetrically backwards on the same frame. Use the free transform tool to rotate it backwards. You will see that the tip of the foot is going below the ground level. Let's correct this by double clicking on the left leg symbol. Inside the left leg symbol, you can see the calf, thigh and feet symbols. Before making any changes, we'll preserve the original position of the parts on frame number 7. 
select the seventh frame on all the layers and press F6 to add a keyframe. Now come back to the first frame. Select the feet and calf symbols and rotate it backwards. Adjust the pant outlines for a smooth visual. Double click outside to come back to the boy symbol and move the left leg a bit to suit the character's proportions. Now again enter the left leg symbol. Observe that when we take the right foot forward, our heels bend upwards while the toes stay on the ground. We'll see how to achieve this effect. Double click on the left feet symbol. Inside, you can see two different layers. One for the toe part, named as feet front. The other layer has the heel, named as feet back. Select the seventh frame on both layers and press F6 to add keyframes. Now, come to the first frame and rotate the front part so it is parallel to the ground. Adjust its outline with the back part. Double click outside to exit the feet symbol. Select the feet part and push it down with the down arrow on your keyboard till it touches the ground level. Move and situate it on the screen to suit the left leg's proportion. Now double click to come to the boy symbol. Now, on the first frame, select the right hand. Here's an interesting observation about walking. When our right leg moves forward, our right hand moves backward. And when our left leg moves backward, our left hand moves forward. The character's right foot is forward. So, the right hand should move back. With the free transform tool, rotate the right hand just a bit backward. Also, notice that when your hand moves, the shoulder shifts just a bit backward too. So, with the left arrow keys, move the shoulder a bit to the back. When you move the parts of the character in this way, always double check if the character's volume and body proportions are all right. When you walk, your hands don't move like stiff sticks. They bend at the elbow smoothly. Let's work a bit on the hands to get that effect. Double click on the right hand symbol. Here, you can see the forearm, arm and palm symbols on different layers. As before, we'll preserve the original position of all the parts by selecting the seventh frame on all the layers and pressing F6. Now, come to the first keyframe. Select the forearm and palm and bring the pivot point at the center of the elbow joint. Rotate the forearm and palm for a slight curve. Double click twice to come to the boy symbol. After making changes to the right hand, let's work on the left hand. As before, you need to hide the overlying layers to see the left hand. The left foot is back. So, the left hand should be forward. So, select the left hand and rotate it forward. Unhide the other layers and rotate it a bit further forward. Let's see how the animation is happening. Drag the timeline seeker forward and backward a bit. Alright. Let's learn an important pointer here. Character walks are designed in cycles. That means they work in a continuous loop. For this, the first and last frames must be identical. So, let's copy the character's body position on the first frame to the 25th frame. For this, select all the first keyframes on the timeline, press and hold down the Alt key, drag the keyframes to the 25th frame and drop them. Now release the Alt key. This process should be carefully repeated inside every body part symbol. Let's do it for the left leg first. Let's follow it up with the right leg, the right hand, the left hand. While copying the first keyframes to the 25th frame for all body parts, also remember to create the 7th keyframe.